Why? Hello and welcome everybody. So today uh, I have something a little different for you. Today I'm here to present to you guys my early game Righteous Fire Inquisitor Gauntlet Guide. Now, before I get started, and I think it's important to pause the music for this, uh, I'm not trying to convince anyone that RF is better than any other build in Gauntlet because objectively it is not. Um, but I do think that it's still an okay skill to play, especially on the uh, Inquisitor Ascendancy for leveling up in a hardcore setting, Gauntlet included. Um, I played this character um, in the last Gauntlet and did just fine all the way to 90. Uh, so I'm pretty much here to just present to you guys what I'll be playing. And if you want to follow along, feel free to. Uh, but remember, some of the really strong picks for Gauntlet this league are things like um, Detonate Dead uh, and also like Seismic Trap Saboteur. With that being said, let's get started. So, um, this character is going to be very different from the initial League starter. Uh, main reasons are we're in Gauntlet um, and in a hardcore environment. So because of those, we want a little bit of extra, extra defenses to just make sure. So what this POB is gonna offer for you guys is no gear in any type of way, because if you don't know how to play RF, I've got a so many guides for you to look at to understand gearing. This is mainly gonna talk about your act progression and your skill tree. And I think the skill tree is so important to understand for the progression in Gauntlet. So let's get started. Um, so act one, a little bit different. Uh, we're still going Winter Tide. However, we're not actually gonna get Winter Tide in act one uh, in terms of actually using it. So uh, this go around, we are taking Disciple of Training or Discipline and Training, I'm stupid, uh, and Holy Dominion. This is a huge source of flat life and just in general, one of the larger life nodes in PoE. And Holy Dominion gives you that extra Eli res with damage that helps so much um, to help counter part of the gauntlet uh, reduced damage taken. Of course, when you get your Winter Tide set up, you do wanna make sure that you're taking Rune Binder and you wanna make sure you're taking Brand Mastery. Remember, if you have Rune Binder, you can't really use any totems unless the totem gets plus one limit. Um, so be careful with that, right? You don't want to take Rune Binder as your pathing. You want to take Rune Binder after you have all your brand nodes. All right, from there, uh, if you look at the skill section, um, I have already tested using Freeze Pulse. I personally like it. Uh, remember, if you feel a bit more advanced or experienced, feel free to level any way that you would like. Um, Freezing Pulse with Ellie Prolif is a nice defensive layer in Gauntlet, especially for players who play a little bit slower. Uh, and the main reason is because that Ellie Prolif, um, that works really well with Holy Dominion because of the chance to freeze. Uh, creates a, a basically a circle. So like say you're in Mud Flats in Act 2 and Aroa charges, it'll actually get frozen when it enters the Prolif, thus preventing you from taking any damage whatsoever. Uh, so this is my preferred setup. And then when you're bossing, so things like Brutus and uh, Mr. Evil, you just remove the Ellie Prolif uh, and you, you sub in your Holy Flame Totem here. And then you have a you basically have Freeze Pulse with added Lightning and Holy Flame Totem with added Lightning and that's enough to clear. Like, it's not the fastest, but it's definitely enough. Uh, from here, you can also make sure that you're running your Vitality Aura. You can also choose to run, uh, sorry, Mudflats Act 1, yeah. You can choose to um, um, run Frost Bomb for a bit of extra damage. Frost Bomb applies exposure, which does help a lot with damage, and Frost Bomb just hits really, really hard. Uh, my preferred mo movement skill is Frost Blink, but it's up to you what you use. And then, of course, you wanna grab uh, Steel Skin and Molten Shell here. Uh, Steel Skin will be much better in the early game. So from here, um, we're going to go into the Act 2 to 3. So Act 2 to 3 uh, is very different from the previous one. So you'll notice we picked up like Light of Divinity. We came through, you grab the Vitality Mono Reservation Efficiency, and you come around, grab your Aura Wheel, uh, which allows you to essentially run in Act 2, Vitality, Tempest Shield, Defiance Banner, Arctic Armor. Now, the reason for the early Tempest Shield and early Arctic Armor, Tempest Shield gives you Shock Immune and will be used very soon with our block-based setup, and Arctic Armor gives us Freeze Immune. You do not actually have to run this, but there's no reason not to, and I think that Freeze is a massive pain in the ass to deal with a lot of the time, especially in a situation like Gauntlet where there's multi-proj. The last thing you want to do is get frozen by one projectile, then get stuck in place to take the whole barrage when you could have been immune to Freeze and just keep like moving out of the way, right? So it's just a personal preference, um, and we're not running Pure Developments anymore in this setup, so getting Freeze Immune early is very, very nice. From here, you can see we have the actual Wintertide links. I'm not going to go too much into this. It's all explained here. Um, we've got Frostblom uh, still, Steel Skin, 
And then you can also use Brand Recall to pull your Winter Tide to you. It's also important you grab the Mana Reservation Efficiency here. Now, moving on to Act 4 and 5, you can see just based off of this, right? We are filling out our block nodes. So that would be through over here uh, and also over here. Now, uh, to give an example of how this works, so we are currently in the Act 4 to 5. So if you go to Act 4 right here, you can actually enable all of your auras. So if you look, we're running now Determination, uh, which we get in Act 3, Vitality, Defiance, Banner, Arctic Armor, Tempest Shield. If I were to check everything here, you'll notice the Mana Reservation works. Uh, I know this says level 70. I'll turn it to like level 35. It still works. Um, if the Mana is a little bit too low for you to feel comfortable, you can always de-level it. For example, I just put us at level 35 and the Vitality is for level 45. So like realistically, if I de-leveled it, you would have a lot of MP back. As you level up, you'll gain more base mana, and that will allow you to keep leveling the vitality as long as you have taken the proper reservation. Um, if you're having big issues, you could drop Defiance Banner. It's not the biggest deal in the super early game. It will be very, very valuable later. Okay, um, moving on here, um, you'll notice we have a Frostblink Hex Touch Frostbite setup. This is like my bread and butter for the most recent edition that I've changed, or basically, your, uh, if you if you follow my League Star, you'll know you use your Frost Blink to apply your Curse. Um, this kind of like chops down on the button presses instead of manually cursing or using a curse on like a different type of curse on hit. You put the curse on hit on your mobility skill to make it much smoother. Uh, from here, we just still have our Frost Bomb, um, your Guard skill. The only other thing is when you're in Act 4, you can also acquire a Golem now. So I prefer Stone Golem. Uh, and then here you'll notice that the Basically, there's nothing else until 72, and that's because your leveling setup does not change at all. If you want to use extra buttons, you want to do extra things, you absolutely can. For example, like if you want to use Vortex with Bone Chill for extra damage, you absolutely can. It's just this puts a lot more pressure on your sockets and your links in early game, which I personally try to avoid. However, due to Gauntlet, a lot of people are going to overlevel things, um, and therefore you may have an abundance of sockets opposed to your standard leveling. Okay, um, taking a look at this, let's go a little bit further down. You'll notice Act 6 and Act 8, well, Act 6 through 8. There's not really much you do on the tree here. Um, you're pretty much just shooting all the way down, right? However, before I get into this, I want to actually go back to this setup and explain why I like the block so much. So you'll notice in this setup right here, you're actually already running 74 block, 74 spell block, your shock immune and your freeze immune and you even have recovery. So whenever you block, spell, or attack, you're gonna gain 20 life. 20 life may not seem like a lot, but when you have monsters that are hasted with extra proj, you'll end up taking a lot more hits than you than you expect, right? This is just part of what happens. Um, furthermore, whenever you block spell damage, you will gain 50 ES, and as we are on left side of the tree, I mean, even just getting one or two pieces of flat energy shield is gonna get you above 50, so it just gives you a little bit of an extra buffer. Furthermore, one of the awesome things about this is the amount of Eli res you get with this setup. You're going to get 12 Eli res from Holy Dominion. You're going to get about 24 Eli res um, from your Sanctuary. You're also going to gain 8 all res from your Safeguard. And then as you start to path through your Act 6 and 8, you'll notice you come over the side here to grab Divine Judgment, which allows you to get a 15 all res mastery. So the gearing should be very, very comfortable in the early stages. Even without running Purity of Elements, you still get the abundance of elemental resistance, thus allowing for easier gearing. Okay, moving it out a little bit, you'll notice I swing all the way down here to Soul of Steel. So in the last Gauntlet, this was basically my check for getting Cruel Lab. Um, I like to overlevel my Labyrinth a lot. To be fair, last Gauntlet was way more rippy with the amount of damage and proj, so you're probably able to run... Uh, Cruel Lab a lot earlier, but for players who want to be extra safe, Soul of Steel gives you that big flat armor, which scales really well. I know it doesn't seem like a lot, but 150 does add up, especially in the Axe, because you get like, yeah. Um, so you basically get the 150 flat, the big increase, and then that scales off your Defiance Banner, that scales off your Determination, and then you get one max All Res. The All Res helps a lot with Azaro's Barrage. Um, yeah, so this is pretty much your point when you are able to do Cruel Lab Pretty safely, I would say, you know, you're rocking very hefty armor for your level. 
Um, you've got Shock Immune, you've got Freeze Immune, you're essentially block cap with a little bit of recovery. You should be no problem in downing Azaro. Damage may be a little low, but again, we're playing Gauntlet. We're supposed to be over farming. This is part of the progression, right? Then over here, you'll notice I have an RF respec. So RF respec, I'll flick it down. You'll notice the points go up by 17. So the standard of what we're doing here is we are just chopping off this. It's a very easy respec if you look. You're literally just pulling out of this. We are going up here. We are filling out Holy Fire. We're making sure to grab the Mastery for Fire Multi. Uh, at this point, you could remove Vitality if you feel comfortable. Um, I will be removing Vitality. Uh, I replace it with the 50 Flat Life. I grab in this little Aura Effect node. Coming downward, you can see we move across here. We fill in Champion of the Cause here. Is that what it's called? Yeah. And then we also grab um, Reservation Mastery. This gives us auras from your skills have increased effect. This is very big because at this point, we are also running Grace. Um, that is the big difference we have done with this version, where uh, instead of running Purity of Elements, we have opted out for Grace. And the main reason for this is because of the fact that you're not going to have a Shaper life gain on Block Shield or like an Aegis Aurora in the early stages of progression, right? So having Grace with Block means you don't get hit as frequent, and when you do get hit, there's a very high chance you mitigate that damage. There is a big problem, though, where Grace requires up to 155 decks, so you want to make sure in the early game you have this dex node here, and you want to prioritize getting decks on your accessories. Um, I haven't shown it here, but in my notes I have a little bit of an example. So essentially what I mean by that is you can have a dex based amulet. There's like uh, Citrine is like 24 dex, 24 strength. There's a 24 dex, 24 in. There's Jade for 30 dex. Don't forget you can benchcraft dex on your gear as well. Go away, don't mind me, the internet's going out. Hopefully the video recording is totally fine still. Um, but yeah, so, so Grace is something I've really always wanted to try. It's just the gearing is a bit more tedious because of attribute requirements, right? So furthermore, going on, you'll notice we have a section for getting into maps, right? So because of the getting into maps, um, you'll notice that we start moving up towards Heart of the Warrior. Let me just go ahead and show again. Actually, getting into maps, what did we even change for here? Oh yeah, yeah, sorry. So getting into maps, um, just put chat in slow mode for me, JD, because I'm just finishing the video. So getting into maps, basically, we um, come over here, right? We grab Bravery and Art of the Gladiator. From Bravery and Art of the Gladiator, we also start to fill in a little bit of, I think it's Reservation, is it? Oh yeah, it's mainly just this, actually, I lied. It's pretty much just coming over here and grabbing uh, Bravery and Art of the Gladiator. This is the only part of the build I don't know if I like. So because if I don't know if I like it, I may just end up removing it. But the some of the things that I really like about this is being able to get um, basically more attack speed for your shield charge, more movement speed because of the ignore movement penalties, and you get a nice chunk of dex. Um, so this is why I've chosen to go here, but this may not be like the optimal part to go to. From here, you'll notice this here is for the 90 plus variant where you're basically trying to incorporate spell suppression. So the best places to get spell suppression, I mean, I can't tell you the exact best, but coming up here, we have the least amount of pathing. We get our jewel slot, we get constitution, we get sentinel. Um, sentinel is also good because evasion and armor works for grace and determ. Then you can get mage bane with reflexes. The thing is with mage bane, if you actually have 155 decks, which we would for our grace, right? So say for example, I come down here and I grab all of this, right? This is 155 dex. This will actually put us at 23 to 24% spell suppression. And that's really good because that essentially alleviates some pressure on spell suppression gearing, right? So with that being said, um, there is one more thing to include for you guys. I have a little uh, image I posted right here. And in this image here, uh, which I'll link, it basically just has the values of spell suppression. This is all for uh, evasion armor gear. So all evasion armor gear, uh, essentially we're aiming for item level 77 and 76. So I'll have this posted so you guys can kind of see and follow along. Other than that, there is a lot more info in the notes if you guys want to check it. And I think the last bit of info, um, you can see down here, I have the RF setup. There's a little bit of flexibility in here. You could read the notes. The last thing to include is 
you are able to um, replace in your auras, you can replace Arctic Armor with Skitterbots when you get Brine King, and that's a big damage increase because Brine King will give you your freeze immune. Um, and other than that, your stun immune, you're relying on Brine King. You can also take, cannot be stunned if you haven't been hit recently. This is something I want to try with Grace and see basically where we end up because I'm pretty sure you can get like 20,000 evasion with a Jade Flask, which is pretty awesome. All right, anyway, that's pretty much about it. Uh, sorry if the video is a little out there. I was streaming while this happened. My internet shit itself and my chat is basically going crazy telling me that there's no sound, but you know, this is a YouTube video, so don't worry about them. Anyway, that's pretty much about it. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Remember, if you did, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget, you can catch me streaming the actual gauntlet uh, live on my channel, twitch.tv slash box. So see you guys all later. Thanks for watching and uh, hope you don't die.